You just found the most downloaded fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump, right? We brought back our friend Michaela Peterson onto the podcast. We had her on a long time ago. Since then, she's absolutely exploded with her podcast, the Michaela Peterson Podcast, which really talks about everything health, physical, mental, and even social commentary. Very intelligent young lady. We talk about her life, her business, and how things have grown since the last time we've had her on the show. Today's giveaway is MAPS Aesthetic. Here's how you can win that program. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. Also, uh, we have a sale going on this month. MAPS Old Time Strength, half off. MAPS OCR, also half off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Kayla, welcome back to the show. It's been a long time. Three, four years? How long now? Five? Maybe five. five. Yeah. I think it was five. 2018, yeah. Wow. We had you on <laughs> at the beginning of like you starting your- You were the first podcast I did. We I think were. I think there might have been a tiny, like a tiny one, so we're but take you were the for all like, your first success. podcast. So you'll yeah. always yeah. remember Definitely. that. We take yeah. the credit. Yeah. Just, that's what we do. Now we're, hold on, hold yeah. on. We're now the first podcast where you're revealing to everybody that you're pregnant. This is true. Yeah. This is exciting. I just told people today. Yeah. And you're you're eight months? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's amazing. So talk to us about, because you, you, you were married before, you have your beautiful daughter. I was divorced with two kids at one point. It was really scary for me, not just to jump back into marriage, but to jump back into having more kids. Did you, was that anything like that for you? Were you struggling with that? Or was it like, no, this is what we're doing? It was more, this is what we're doing. Mm. Like I knew... I mean, especially because I've got more of a time limit, I would say, than you do mm. for having kids. So my plan was I need to find some, not that I just like chose a random person. I was like, <laughs> this guy will do. I was I was really worried about finding another person. Mm. That was really scary. I'd, I'd actually just given up on that because I'd met people and like, I don't really get along with a ton of people. Mm for whatever reason, maybe I'm like more disagreeable than the average person, or maybe that's just normal for people. But I was like, oh, this is, I'm screwed for a while. <laughs> um, but then I met my husband, his name's Jordan too. Mm -hmm. and people love that. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> They can see it in your face. <laughs> <laughs> it was a polite Interesting. smile. Interesting, yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah. Um, but we, we, I knew I wanted kids right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, do you know if this boy or girl? It's a boy. Oh wow! Yeah, so we got a girl and a boy now. And your and your daughter, she excited. She's so excited. She's so excited. That's great. So that's really nice. She's been like, you know, that's one of the well hard parts about having a relationship that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'd rather have a kid that has siblings. Mm -hmm. So I felt kind of bad. Like I know lots of people who are only kids, but. She's been like, can I have a baby brother, baby sister? So oh. now it's happening. Oh, that's, that's you're, awesome. You're now an, an older, wiser version of yourself. When you look back at your parenting, you know, six years ago, what are some of the things that you, you know you're going to do different or that you plan to do this time that maybe you didn't do the first time around? I'm going to have, like, I'm going to have more help. So with Scarlett, uh, I had way less money. So I didn't have very much money. And I stayed home. And I worked at the same time and I, and I didn't sleep really for like six months because she was breastfeeding through the night. Mm -hmm. And that just destroyed my mental health. Although the relationship at the time didn't help either. Mm -hmm. But it was just like, I needed, I needed more help. And we didn't have family around at the time because mom and dad were off doing their thing because that was right when things got crazy. It was right before I came on the podcast, mm -hmm. really, like 2017. And so it was just, I was isolated. I was much younger than anyone like none of my friends had kids i was 25 at the time which isn't which is young honestly mm -hmm. especially for people in toronto or more liberal places but it's pretty young and so it was just extremely isolating so i'm not i'm like a bit i was a bit scared of now that i have more going on how am i going to do this um and so i'm going to have more help like i'm i'm hiring a newborn care specialist to help with the nights so that somebody's there and I don't have to worry about it. Mm. Um, and that's making me feel better. We did the same thing with the second one. So we hired uh, someone to come help with the post care. And yeah. It's so valuable. You mentioned the sleep deprivation and what that does to you. I, 
I don't think it's talked about enough. People joke about it. Like, oh, it's so hard not to get... No, it really fucks up your <laughs> mental state. Yeah. It's like mental torture. It's it's torture. Yeah. It's crazy. And then the guilt on top of it, like you can't really sleep. Yeah. And I remember with Scarlett, like it was every little... Because your hormones change, so every little You're sound she made, I was yeah. like awake. Yeah. And it was brutal for months and months and months. And I was like, I'm not getting into that mm. state again. Because mm -hmm. like, that's not good for your kids either to be so stressed about it. Mm -hmm. She's like... I need to prioritize sleep somehow. So since the last time you were on, your podcast has exploded. Your content, your uh, the way you communicate on your show, the guests you have, it's like you've just, every time I hear you and listen to you, I'm like, oh my God, she's better. Oh my God, it's better. Oh my, in fact, uh, we sent some of your clips to our editing team because we're like, I don't know who's editing this. In mm -hmm. fact, I think uh, Adam might've messaged you. Like you're doing such a great job. Talk about the Thank growth. You. Cause you were not a media person when you started it. No. First of all, what made you start it? And then what was the process like of learning to get better at that? Well, I think because of the diet, like just eating meat, I was invited on quite a few shows because of that and because of who my dad is. Mm -hmm. And so I was on quite a few podcasts and then somebody reached out and was just like, you should start one. Like, I like talking. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> um, and I needed, life was so shitty for so long. Like, there was the relationship, but it was also, my mom and dad got really sick in 2019. And it was just, like, a horrible period of time. And the podcast was kind of an outlet to, like, be normal and be brought mm. out of the situation I was in. So, I kept doing it even though I was in pretty rough shape in like 2019 and 2020 uh, from taking care of my dad. So I kept doing it. I liked it. It was growing. People seemed to be listening to it. So I always did that kind of on the side um, from other work. This is like hard to monetize until you have more of an audience. Mm -hmm. um, what did you do? What, what other work did you do? You were helping dad out, right? Why didn't you, you were yeah, I managed, I managed his brand. So I was like setting up all the social media channels and then negotiating mm -hmm business opportunities and making sure people aren't taking advantage of him. That's a big one. Mm. Uh, so like most of my time, I'm still doing that. Most of my time was that. But I was like, might as well grow something on the side. I was also worried that I had some negative articles come out about me, um, especially at the beginning when people were like, you're going to die if you do the carnivore diet. Yeah. And I was like, it's uncomfortable not being able to talk back to these giant mm. like media corporations and say, oh no, I'm not just a weird meat girl. Like, <laughs> I'm a person. I'm pretty normal, I think, maybe. Um, and so part of the need for growing a social media uh, following was so I had a platform to speak back against, like, articles that just weren't real about mm -hmm. me. It was like a safety net. Yeah. What have been some of the biggest challenges of doing it so far for yourself? Well, let me see. Challenge? Pff, I don't know. For podcasting, there haven't been very many challenges. Mm. The other things in my life were so awful that the problems that were podcasting were like, oh, the camera's not working. Oh, I had you on one time when I was in Dubai <laughs> yeah. and it was brutal. It That's broke. the worst. Yeah. That was the worst podcasting episode I've ever done. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, but that, Good that fell on. Yeah. It, it was, it was really bad. Um, that doesn't really happen anymore. But that was like just special for you. Yeah. But um, you. that was pretty early on. Did you too. air that? Did that ever go up? It did. Okay. And it wasn't. You had to edit it all was, that. It was out. okay. Yeah. It like we managed it. Yeah. It looked better post edit than while it was going on. But um, the complications having to do with podcasting were absolutely nothing. No rough guests. No guests that you just got annoyed with or you didn't like. Oh or, yeah. Okay. Mm. As I say, that has to have happened by now, right? Oh yeah. I do, I do um opposing views sometimes. So it's usually a contentious issue. Like I just did one on the Gaza Israel issue. Oh, wow. They touched that That's one. Oh yeah. yeah. That's a tough one. So I had somebody on from both sides that, you know, believe that they're 100% right on yeah. both sides. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've had some opposing views episodes where I really didn't like one of the guests, but, um, it's pretty easy to stay neutral from just, I usually ask the people the same questions. So it's just a neutral conversation. Yeah, so I don't have to like debate not that interested in debating with people who just completely disagree with me. Cause I don't know. You do you. Yeah. Do you pick your guests just off of like stuff you're interested in? Cause it seems similar to, well, not the same, but similar to kind of the direction that your dad goes in 
Uh, but it, it definitely sounds like it's stuff you're interested in as well. Like, are, were you specific about it? Or were you like, no, this is what I want to talk about? Yeah, it was just that. Actually, mm -hmm. at the beginning, I was trying to figure out health things. So it was, That's it right. Was, yeah, so I, I was actually using it so it that I could- wellness stuff. It was at the beginning. And that was partly because dad was so sick that I was like, oh, if I have a podcast, I'll be able to talk to these doctors <laughs> and see if they know anything that can help us mm. without going the normal medical route. Mm -hmm. which worked. So I, at the beginning, it was very health oriented. Mm. Where are you now that you're, you come out and you're like, Hey, I'm having a baby. Are you thinking about any of the potential, I don't know, backlash with your diet now? Because mm. it's one oh, thing to be like, Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm eating this way and it's just me. But now you're like, Oh, I'm pregnant and I've been eating just meat. Like, have, have you thought about that? Like, Oh shit. Are they going to come after me for this? No, I don't care. I don't care like <laughs> at all. That stuff doesn't bother me even a little bit. Plus I started the diet, like when I was breastfeeding Scarlett, she was four months old and I had, my arthritis had come back. And so my wrist was buckling when I like got up to breastfeed at mm -hmm. night. And I was like, this is not doable. I'm not getting arthritis again. Um, and I was just eating meat and salad at the time. I talked about this on the first yeah. podcast and that's when I went to the carnivore diet and I can't eat other things still. Although I've got some theories why now, but I can't eat anything still. So I'm not going to provoke an autoimmune disorder mm -hmm. so that the public will feel better about the health of my baby. Oh, yeah. Like <laughs> I'm so glad me you having said that. an autoimmune disorder is not healthier for the baby. I'm so glad no. you said that. By the way, also for people who don't understand this, like autoimmune can be deadly to a baby because you're, you're, you're hosting, uh, you know, a foreign, I guess, entity. And if your immune system all of a sudden thinks that that is not, good then it'll attack the, the child oh. so you don't want autoimmune shit when no you're, not yeah. at all and i go like uh people get different symptoms with whatever they have i had juvenile rheumatoid arthritis um but i had a host of cognitive symptoms and it's the cognitive symptoms that really get me so if i go off the diet i still get really volatile and really anxious and really depressed mm. and i can't think and brain foggy and it affects my appearance as well. My face gets puffy and I start getting skin rashes and things. Mm -hmm. So it affects how I look, but it just shuts off my brain. So there's just a, like, I would be eating other things. It's been really hard during the pregnancy. Like the one part of the, the pregnancy. Yeah, what about been, cravings and stuff? It's been rough. Like <laughs> um, the craving, like I've literally cried over a cucumber, like multiple <laughs> times, seriously been like, this is so like wow. messed up. Um, but I've ha I got hit with a meat aversion, which can ha happen in pregnancy. Uh, happened to my wife actually for the yeah. first trimester. A meat made her nauseous. Just yeah. So I was like, that probably won't happen to me because all I eat is meat. I've been only eating meat for like it's going to be six years in December. Yeah. So next month it'll be six years. Wow. It's like, well, my body isn't going to do that, and that is not what happened. I had a meat aversion first, and it came back in the third. And so it's just been like, that's been brutal. What do you do when that happens? You just got to force feed yourself. Yeah. It's either that, like I started eating chicken, which I don't normally eat. I usually just eat beef because chicken doesn't make me feel as good. And that's a little bit more palatable, but like it's miserable, miserable diet when you're pregnant. But if I branch out at all, then mm -hmm. the cognitive symptoms and the autoimmune symptoms are too bad. Yeah. So. When, you, when you were on the show originally, that, that was my speculation that, that the people who do well in carnivores, because for whatever reason, their immune systems are hyper reactive. Uh -huh. And meat just seems to be the thing that, uh, that doesn't cause that reaction. Yeah. You know? And at the beginning, I think when I talked to you guys before, I was like, I felt so much better that I thought maybe people are supposed to eat this way. Yeah. Like it was so mind blowing to me to not be sick all the time that I was like, maybe people are supposed to eat this way, or maybe they're supposed to eat a little bit of other things, but like primarily meat. And I still believe that people are supposed to eat primarily beef, but I do think that there's like my immune system is hyperactive mm -hmm. and I'm responding to things in an abnormal way and something's triggering that. And now I think it was mold that was triggering that like throughout mm -hmm. my life. I used to think it was maybe I have a bacterial infection or a virus and my immune system's just constantly inflamed. Um, now my theory is mold. So we'll see how that mm. plays out. Do you think that, have you tested that? Like when you travel maybe some places and you notice all of a sudden you feel better. Is that why? Yeah, yeah. Or worse. That's what my sister has noticed. My sister, after the episode of Sal talking about his mold, she's like, oh yeah. my God, I think we have an issue because yeah. I just took vacation for a week and, and, we were, and it felt great at a hotel. And then I came back home and all the symptoms came yeah. back again. My, my, yeah. my theory yeah. is more, I think this is what I think. And of course I could be totally wrong, but I, I don't know. I, I don't, think it's one thing that's the cause 
I do think that for some reason, and this is what we need to figure out, for some reason, first off, people's immune systems have become more reactive over the last few decades anyway. Like food allergies, I didn't know any kids with food allergies when I was a kid. Uh, you know, when my kids go to school, it's like they have whole tables that are peanut free or whatever. So something's going on that's causing our immune systems to become hypervigilant. And in extreme cases, it's someone like yourself. And so they're just more reactive to anything that you could become reactive to. Mm -hmm. Things that are in foods, mold, maybe mm -hmm. maybe viruses, bacteria could be a part of that. It could be almost anything. You just got to figure out what the hell is that root thing that's going on because it's becoming more and more common. Mm -hmm. You know, you're probably running into more and more people, I would assume, that come up to you and like, oh my God, this helped me. Oh, yeah. 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 And there's, I've got a group, it's what, there's 18,000 people on Facebook really? on the diet. Mm. Yeah. And these are people that are seriously sick. Like they've been mm. on eight medications and you have to get pretty sick. I feel like to go on only eating meat, uh, to get there. Yeah. Unless you're like a weird fitness guy that's like, I'm going to try it for a month. Those are the two yeah, different people. Listen, I feel like yes. you have the people that are forced in that direction. <laughs> yeah. and the people that think it's a cool idea. Yeah. It's like the people that think it's a cool idea never last. Yeah. 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 They're like, I tried it for a month. Yeah. It was, it was cool. Yeah. 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 Wow. So how's, how is the business now? So six years later, you, that's, that's pretty much what you do now. You have your show, you have your, how's it going? I started too many projects <laughs> and then moved and got pregnant. And so I'm a little bit overwhelmed at mm. the moment, but I do like, I do brand management for my dad. Um, I have the podcast. I've got a supplement company that's like slowly rolling out fuller health. And then we're launching Peterson Academy like in the new year. That's right. Yes. Oh, that was way too many things awesome. at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> that, was like, that was too much, but things are going well. Are you delegating some of it? Do you have yeah. someone helping oh, you with yeah. the Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. So there's like somebody, there's one person running the supplement brand. Um, and I have like, dad has a number of employees helping his brand. Uh, and then Peterson Academy has like, I don't know, 25 employees. Okay. Cause there's a lot going on there, but overseeing that, um, I'm stretched a little bit thin mm. you have a, <laughs> with the pregnancy you'd be and anywhere. the move. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. So uh, supplements, let's talk about the supplement. What made you go in that direction? Uh, you gave us a, a sample. Well, you gave us a bottle of one of your products that's for helping the body break down alcohol. Is that the only that's supplement the only, you have right now? Okay. Yeah, that's the only supplement for now. Now, why in that direction? Well, I can't tolerate fillers because I'm allergic to everything. I can't tolerate fillers in supplements. So oh. finding supplements that I can take has been impossible. So I haven't really been taking supplements. So what are the fillers that you're talking about? The capsules gelatin typically, which is okay, right? Yeah, gelatin, gelatin finds even the like the cellulose capsules, that's fine. Okay. Um, it's magnesium stearate that's a problem, yeah. and that's in a lot of them. Um, and that gives me like gut issues almost immediately. So that but a lot of them have like rice, some sort of rice filler. Uh it's like people don't usually make them. Oh, they don't make them because if you, if you work with people who use machines to make the supplements, they use flow agents to help the machine flow the supplement. Oh, so it isn't clogged up in the... Yeah, okay. so they say, oh, well, we need to add this additive because it's a flow agent. Now, it turns out if you're just picky and annoying, they'll just get rid of the flow agent and go, oh my gosh, no, the machine still works. Okay. So that's what we did. Okay, so you, look, <laughs> you want to create products for people who get reactive or can be reactive to... Yeah. Lots of different things. Yeah. So the products are literally just cellulose capsule with whatever you want to take in it, as opposed to these other fillers. And I would assume most people don't have problems with fillers, but magnesium stearate, I know, can cause issues in people. You know what's funny about what you're saying? So you're so reactive, it's easy for you to see that you have a reaction. Mm. But there's a lot of us that have kind of low level reaction. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to pinpoint. Um, that'd be interesting for me to try because I take so many supplements, uh, partially because uh, I probably have a bad relationship with supplements, so I just take lots of pills. <laughs> but uh, I wonder if if that would make a difference for me. To switch I feel something like, like it that. would. Because I'm somewhat reactive, not nearly as reactive as you are, but somewhat. I feel like anytime you can remove anything extra, mm -hmm. um, whether it's in, in like the environment or food or mm -hmm. like just things you shouldn't necessarily be eating, it helps a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. do, do you monetize a podcast? Is a, is a podcast money making for you? Yeah. What was that like? So good. It's and it's that's going really well. So I have a couple of sponsors. Um, I'm pretty picky about the sponsors. I had to switch like after this mold scenario uh, from 
Miami, mm. I, I had to switch the air filter I was advertising because I was advertising this air filter. And then I realized, oh, there's actually a major difference between air filters and what particle size they filter. Sure. I don't know if anyone cares about this. I but do. Like, no, okay, I'm, inter okay. I'm interested in it because I know you have big brands like Air Doctor out there. Yeah, our have, Air Doctor is mm -hmm. good. Okay, yeah. There's so what do you want to look for if you want to use an air filter that get, gets rid of like, you know, like mold spores? Yeah, so you want to look for a filtration size of 0 0.03 microns. So there's only a couple of brands that actually go down to 0 0.03, and that's because they pick up fragments of mold spores, which is mostly what's hanging out in the air if your HVAC has mold. Mm -hmm. It's not whole spores. It's fragments. Okay. So it just needs to filter down to 0 0.03. Okay. We use Air Oasis. Air okay. Oasis is really good. Okay. Okay. Otherwise, it's just getting through the filter. Yeah. And so the, the company I was advertising before, they filter down to 0 0.01, which is pretty normal for an air filtration company. And then I was like, oh, that, you know, can't do that one anymore because they're not the best. And I didn't know that until. That's just, interesting. I wonder how many dude, air filters. Dude, I just filters. bought six air filters. Yeah. I didn't even check that. I hope that's not. <laughs> I know. I'm going to have to buy a bunch of new ones. Did you not do air doctor? Because that's what we have in the studio. No, I didn't. Because. You cheaper, huh? No, oh, yeah. I just, you know, there you go. Fucked up. Yeah. 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 Trying to, save, save, trying to save a dollar right there, guy. I got the, Every time. The knockoff freaking pay for filter. Uh, just pushing hey, your sports hey, around. They don't sponsor us. It's spinning around Air doctor's fault. Sponsor us. And then maybe I'll use your product. I actually wanted to get it. Maybe you could connect us. I actually wanted to get an air filter sponsor. Yeah. We reached out to another. If they send me six samples. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, listen. There you go. So what was it like growing up in the Peterson household? What was that like as a kid? Because you know, everybody sees your dad and now you're out in the public, so you get this idea. And I can't imagine having like what was that environment like? Was it like very different from normal? Was it like dad blowing everybody's minds all the right. time with his talks? What was it like? Were you the jokester? I didn't know any different, so I thought it was normal. But then once I moved out, started living with roommates and things, I was like, oh, my dad's pretty uh, eccentric. That's what I thought. It's like, I've got a pretty eccentric dad, especially when I started seeing other people's houses. Like, our house was full of Soviet Union art. Full. With like yeah, that is Completely weird. full, <laughs> yeah. We had over 100 paintings in there. Like, every wall was almost a different color. And then I'd go to somebody else's house, and it'll be all white. I'd be like, oh, hmm. something's different. Um, but he, he worked quite a bit. Uh, not that I didn't see him, but he did work quite a bit cause he had, you know, he taught at U of T and then he had a psychology practice and then he, he had a couple of online products that he started like 20 years ago that didn't really pick up steam until now. So he had three things going on all the time. So he was kind of busy. Um, but yeah, our talks were pretty similar to what he lectures about now. So there was a lot of, there were a lot of family sit downs if anything was going <laughs> like even remotely sideways and we're like, we're not leaving this table till it's sorted out. Oh, wow. That was, uh, that was normal. Now, how was that as a teenager? Wow. Were you rebellious about that? Oh or were yeah. You, oh, you yeah. were? Yeah. And I think that's partly because I was, I was really quite sick and depressed and mm. I was so angry. And my dad always said, like, tell the truth, no matter what. Like, tell the truth, no matter You're what. Like, All right, here it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so I'd go do something that they wouldn't approve of, you know, like drinking, say, mm -hmm. like on a Friday as a teenager. Like, what were you doing last night? This is what I was doing last night. And then I get in trouble and I'd be like, okay, you told me to tell the truth. And now you're getting mad at me. My brother just wouldn't say anything <laughs> and he didn't get in trouble. And I was like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Why am I getting trouble for telling the truth? But I went like overboard. I was a little chattier than I probably needed to be as a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all these things. So yeah, I was, uh, I was, I was a bit of a mess as a teenager, but I think it's because, I mean, I was on antidepressants. I was on birth control and who knows that's not a great combination no. uh, on top of having an autoimmune disorder. So I was, it was like, I was angry. It influences the psyche. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you said even at one point you were on stimulants to help Adderall. offset. Yeah. Which also affects psyche. I said the whole gamut. Yeah. Sounds oh like man. A, sounds like a I, was party. On, I had, by the time I was 23, I had perfected a mix of cocktails to like keep me fairly functional. Wow. What? Now compared to now, not even close, but I had like Adderall, to get rid of the chronic fatigue. I was taking Benadryl at night to sleep. Um, I had the antidepressant. I had birth control, which was partially for my skin. I was on an antibiotic that was for my skin. And then I was on the immune suppressants for the 
oh, flea damn. arthritis. I know I was on a prescription strength antihistamine because I was allergic to everything. So I was on so many things, but when I added in the Adderall, I was like, I'm awake. Mm. Now I wasn't like awake. I was like awake. That stuff is insane. Yeah. It is crazy. Yeah. I, I don't know how to give that to kids. I didn't have, yeah. I didn't have a, an Adderall pill until I was an adult in my late 20s, and I'll never forget trying it for the first time for totally not any reason other than for recreational reason and i went holy shit it's we a give, drug they're giving we this give to kids, kids. Yeah. and it was a dose that i knew it was a very low dose but yeah it was the first time i had it and i was blown away by how i felt and as a grown man going oh my god well, I, I can't believe we prescribe kids this. i got diagnosed with adhd as an adult um and then they offered me a prescription for adderall and i had i i stopped taking it because i identified i was developing a not a great relationship with it. And I think to myself, they oh. give this to kids. I could, I could tell, I could tell, like it was, it was getting a hold of me. So I just cut it off completely. Not that yeah. I needed it in the first place. I'd already done my business and everything, but you know, they give you something and you feel it and you're like, cool. But uh, yeah. yeah, can't believe they give that to kids. I think I was on so much at the time and I was so sedated. And I think part of the reason I had chronic fatigue, I believe the fatigue was there, but I think it was a side effect of the antidepressant. Sure. Cause oh, I was dude. on a high dose of an antidepressant mm -hmm. and I was on it at such a young age that I didn't know, but I think the chronic fatigue might've been a side effect. Yeah. So I was balancing side effects. So when I took Adderall, I was like, oh, I'm finally awake, sure. I can think. Sure. But then when I started to go into the paleo diet and I started to get off of my medications, the Adderall like changed and it got rid of my sense of humor. Oh, um, I see. It destroyed my appetite the whole time, but it really impacted my sense of humor. And I started getting foggy. So it wasn't like I woke up, it was like, I'd get overly focused on one thing mm. and like obsessive. And it just, it wasn't fun. Not that it was fun before. It really was just like hyper caffeine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, once I started to go paleo, I was like, oh, this is not good anymore. What was well, the coming yeah. off for you? Did you have to do like one thing at a time or did you go cold turkey? What was it like coming off everything? So I, I made a huge mistake there. And um, I stopped taking the immune suppressants. I didn't have the support of any of my doctors because I was like, it was 2015 at the time with a paleo diet. So my doctors were just like, you're crazy. Um, and so I stopped the immune suppressants. I didn't even tell my doctors. I was lying actually, because you can get fired in Canada for going to a rheumatologist and not listening to what they say. So I was like, yeah, I'm still on it. And I was mm. like, okay, doing well. I was like, yeah, pff, whatever. <laughs> but so I stopped that. And then when I went gluten-free, I stopped that. Um, and then when I cut like grains and processed foods and soy and dairy and eggs and like cut a bunch of things out. I stopped everything else over a two month period pretty quickly. Like I would say Adderall, I just stopped. Mm. Like most of the things, things I just stopped. Antidepressants, I stopped in two weeks. Wow. And I felt amazing. And then I got hit with antidepressant withdrawal, which I didn't even know was a thing. How and long I, does that take hmm. to kick in usually? Or how, how long did it take for you? For me, it started two weeks after I stopped taking it. And what does that feel like? It feels like you're trapped in a horror movie permanently. So just fear? Yeah, fight or flight. Uh, I had uh, skin sensitivity, so I had to stop wearing like, I still don't really like polyester, but like I couldn't tolerate polyester or really soft touch. It just felt like it almost hurt. Um, I wasn't able to go around fluorescent lights easily because the fluorescent lights wow. hurt. It's different wow. sounds hurt, mm. like everything hurt. And... um at the time, foods really made that worse. And I attributed all of those symptoms to food reactions. Mm. So I was having these food reactions for like three weeks um, that I don't get anymore. And I know that that was from coming off of antidepressants because uh, I've talked to a lot of people who've come off of antidepressants. Same thing. Anti like psych med withdrawal. I got off of Oxycontin when I was 17 after I had my hip and ankle replaced because I was on them for a year. And that was unpleasant for mm. sure. Mm -hmm. I um, I could probably feel my brain recover for about a year after that in increments. Antidepressants were a completely other monster. Really? Interesting. Yeah. I've been on them since I was 12. So 12 to 23. Well, sure. Wow. And I was on a high dose. Um, and these are SSRIs? Just typical? Okay. Yeah. I was on citalopram. Mm -hmm. And um it was horrible. Like I would not recommend anybody just suddenly stopping those. I didn't know that antidepressant withdrawal existed. I knew that opiate withdrawal existed, sure. alcohol withdrawal existed, um, but not psych med withdrawal, which is just like, whew, there's a reason. 
Wow. People have a hard time I didn't even know those. about opiate withdrawal until I experienced myself. I tore mm. my ACL, MCL, and was the first time I'd ever been prescribed Vicodin. And I remember coming back to the doctor and telling him that, man, I'm, I was at the time the prescription was like one every four hours I was supposed to take. And I remember telling the doc, like, man, I'm still in a lot of pain. And he said, well, how are you taking it? I go, well, I, I take one, you know, when it hurts, it starts to hurt. So I take it. And they're like, oh, no, 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 you need to stay ahead of the pain. <laughs> And so Great they're like, advice. make sure you take it at four or earlier before. And so then I'm like, you know, religiously taking this thing for like six months. And then I remember like, okay, I was, I knew I was healed. I was back to training and stuff like that. And so I just cut cold Turkey. Yeah. And then the next day yeah. had like the most awful flu symptoms and I couldn't sleep that night. And then the next night the symptoms were even worse. And I'm like, man, I still had some of those pills. I'm like, I'm going to take one of those because that'll help me sleep. And I took it and it went, everything went away and i went oh shit and then right around i got on the internet right away started searching I'm like oh i'm going through withdrawals right now i had no idea and they don't communicate that with you when they prescribe them to you at all no no they just kind of casually like sometimes maybe not for you for oxycontin for me it's the it was the long acting one and so that saturates your receptors almost constantly which is what psych meds do which is why they're so hard to get off of because everything everything never up regulates down regulates right yeah so getting off of that I weaned down, like they said, over a two or three week period, as fast as I could tolerate. And then when I cut it out, yeah, I had the same like sweating, flu-like symptoms. I had this sensation of ants crawling under my skin. Yes. Mm. I remember like lying in my parents' bed being like, wow, this is really uncomfortable. I bet if I took one, it would go away. And I remember thinking that and being like, hell no. But what I should have done is just gone down slower right. instead mm. of just stopping. But I was yeah. so tired of being on them after a year of like sedation from painkillers. So awful. Do you think going through all that, because I mean, you know, when, when you hear about the medications you were on, the arthritis you had as a kid, which was so bad, you had to have joints replaced going through the whole process. You think that's just made you like, do you look back and be like, I'm glad I did that because it's made me who I am and I'm really tough or you like, fuck that. That's I um, I don't regret very many things because I think that's made me tougher. Like you said, um, I would like to stop other people from going through the same thing. Mm. They can have other things they go through that make them tough. Like, I think it's unnecessary. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's mostly that like, it's like nobody needs the frustrating about thing about the joint replacements is like the hip is pretty good. The ankle, it's just, it's not a real ankle. A real ankle is way better than a replaced ankle. Mm. A replaced ankle is better than an ankle with no cartilage, but like, it's not great. And if I'd found the diet and been able to put myself into remission faster, you then I could have saved the ankle, but the ankle's like, is gone. So it's frustrating to be like, well, that's just me. Now, now as a mom, mm. right. Going through all that as a kid and all that stuff. And you know, you, you, you have a, a different view of the medical system than most people, because you got to see the, the bad sure. side of it, the, how are you with your children going to the doctor and dealing with things? Are you, are you like, do you have to like carefully pick the right doc? Cause you think they're like go super it? hippie mom now or yeah, what? So yeah. So like, yeah. where are you on that spectrum? Are you like the super crunchy hippie? Like, we're yeah. Not, or okay. Yeah. I'm like way into hippie zone and I do not, <laughs> I do not have the personality of a hippie person you don't know at say. all. Yeah. So, so you're not like all that ah, sweet. Throws them all off. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're like, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. So no, I've told her, I mean, I've told her that there are good doctors and bad doctors. And just because they're a doctor, you don't trust them. But mm. I tell her that with for like any sure, that's authority everybody. figure. They're just people. Like just because they have a title doesn't mean they're trustworthy. If anything, be more skeptical. Um, but we've pretty much avoided the medical system. Now, I work with some uh, good doctors, like especially since we got sick from mold. Mm -hmm. I'm working with a great doctor. And now that it's not... Now that it's like 2023 there, you can go out and find good doctors. Mm -hmm. um, so we just avoid the like mainstream medical system. If I ever needed to bring her to a doctor for whatever reason, it would be a specialist in whatever's wrong, so like mold mm -hmm. or an integrative doctor. Are you doing, are you doing traditional births yeah. or are you doing at home or at that? home? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, traditional. I, I was figuring like, like how real far, traditional. How, yeah. Yeah, yeah, how far back oh, is so traditional? Oh, so you're going to do it at home. Yeah, I had Scarlett at home. Wow. That's great. I yeah. Have you talked about that at all? I did with Scar. I didn't talk much about it. I had a blog at the time, so I was blogging a lot. Um, but I was so traumatized from the medical system that I was having panic attacks going into hospitals. Mm. Um, Bad place to give birth. If you're, I would say in the middle of yeah. a panic attack. Yeah, yeah not no, great. No. So 
usually when people ask me like, what do you think I should do? I say, go wherever makes you feel safest and give birth there. Yeah. So a lot of people mm -hmm. there, they have a lot of trust in hospitals and they can get set up and then they they feel like they've got backup people there in mm -hmm. case anything goes wrong. And they're going to freak out if they're, those people aren't there, then they're probably better off in a hospital. But I did research on how often there are interventions used. And I mean, they're used in hospitals. They're not used at home. No. Why? I don't, I don't know, but I'm... I'm definitely going to stay at home. I hate hospitals. They smell That's weird. Why. The lighting's bad. There's always buzzing noises. Yeah, yeah. There's weird smells. And also, like so so uh, so I was uh, enlightened on this as a on our podcast. So we did a podcast. I don't remember what episode it was early on, and I made a comment something along the lines of like, "Oh, women, you know, modern medicine has saved so many women because women used to die from childbirth all the time." Okay, just yeah. a passing comment. A midwife emails us and says, you're, no, you're totally wrong. Like natural childbirth is very successful, mm -hmm. very whatever. And so I looked into it and there was a documentary, the business of being born. You might've seen that. I don't know if you've seen that. Have I haven't seen? heard of oh, that. Oh, That's cow. You got to watch, gotta watch oh, that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you're going to love that. Especially what you're about Ooh, to give that birth. That does sound fun. Yeah. yeah. Especially, especially since you're about to give birth. Yeah. So it was about how the C-section rate is for the roof and there's the the escalating interventions that tend to happen in the hospital where you go in, you're not progressing fast enough. Here's a Pitocin. Oh, now it's too painful. Yeah. Epidural. Yeah. Well, now you can't push the baby out. Yes. C-section type of deal. Um, and it blew my mind because I watched it. I said, everything's an emergency. Yeah. yeah I'm like, crazy. of course this yeah. makes yeah. perfect sense. Like, like why it would be this way. So we did, we tried to do it natural with my three-year-old didn't work out. We experienced the, the scale of interventions with him, which was like, Oh my gosh, this is terrible. And then my, youngest we were able to do it the way we wanted to and it was such an incredible experience but i remember learning from a midwife that and they said look um when animals are giving birth in nature when danger comes or they feel danger their body stops giving birth so mm -hmm. they can get away mm -hmm. so if you're the reason why a lot of times moms are like oh i'm in labor take them to the hospital and they're like oh labor stopped because of the anxiety and the fear i'm in the car get over here prod you check you whatever you want to create an environment where it's like you feel totally safe. So yeah. the whole process. And that's why I think her advice, actually, to people that ask, that's really good advice. That's what I was just going to say. Like top Go where you feel safe. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the thing that really got me cause, um, was that if you get stressed out and your cortisol goes up, mm -hmm. which just happens if you get stressed out, that directly yeah. lowers oxytocin, yes. which is what induces contractions. Yep. Yeah. That's enough. Don't stress out. So yep. whatever you do, like get ready to be as zen as possible yep. and let your body do its thing. And then your body knows what to do. Generally speaking. Yeah. yeah not to mention, this is such a fascinating topic because we like a year ago, we, we just had Dahlia, but not to mention just the, like the contractions that you get naturally versus the ones that are induced by Pitocin. Yeah. Pitocin contractions are like, boom, yeah. like very regular. Vicious, yeah. They hit you hard. <laughs> Whereas a natural, it's almost like the body will go with as far as you could tolerate. In fact, there's like a period of break. There's like a break when you're, you're oh, we're getting there. And then all of a sudden you have like 30 minutes of no contractions. And then the next one's come and then it's time to push type of deal. This happens in natural childbirth. I had no idea. Yeah. And the midwife's like, oh, your body is working with you. I'm like, oh my God. Our, yeah. course, our doula mm -hmm. and the and the doctor almost got into a fight. It was crazy mm -hmm. how fast they I wanted to push. That. Yeah, wanted oh. to push. Same experience. And yeah. she was, and the doctor's telling Katrina that and the doula's looking at her and saying, no, you don't have to. You're fine. You're fine. That's so stressful. Crazy, right? Right in the middle of that, like have fun with not having high quarters all in that situation. Right. Please. Right. Yeah, please. Are you going to have Scarlett there? Is she going to watch? Is she going to be in the, at, when you push or are you going to have her out? Uh, no, I think it's too much. Maybe, she right? It's just wild. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. Like, I think it's, that's a little does, much, bro. Oh, no, <laughs> well, some people old, have their children. Like, ah, never adventure. having kids after that. Yeah. That's real hippie. Some people. Yeah, 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 too yeah, far hippie. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the whole family is like, sons of the placenta. That's your baby. Yeah. How, how is she as a little girl? Is she, I mean, you were, you were rebellious a bit. You said when you grew up, was she, is she like that too? Does she have your spirit? She's more stubborn than me. I don't think I actually was that stubborn. I think I was just really sick okay. and then mm. really angry from all the medication. Okay. Like, I really think it was that, um, she's more stubborn than me, but she's really easy. She's a really easy kid. Mm. It was rough. Like we moved from Canada to Nashville to Miami and now we're in Arizona. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, because we moved to Nashville and she got sick. And I started seeing symptoms that she had that I had when I was a kid, mm. uh, like chronic bronchitis. And, I, and, and she wasn't like 
running around being a happy little kid, which she was doing in Canada. She was just like mm. sad, kind of. Uh -oh. I don't know if it was depressed, but it just suddenly she got quiet. Mm. And I was like, oh my gosh, she's got like bronchitis all the time and she's quiet. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. I had wrong. to terrify you, huh? Oh, just horrible. And I was like, I got her tested for tree allergies. She had all the tree allergies. I was like, okay, this is not heading in a good direction. And so we moved a bunch because I thought it was tree allergies at the beginning, but it turned out it was these stupid moldy houses. Wow. So mm. she, now that we've moved to Arizona and we're really aware of like what's in our environment, she's a completely different little girl running wow. around. She's way more extroverted than she's been in like two years. Oh, wow. Her stomach aches That's are great. gone. Like, so. I noticed a change in my goodness. son's personality. Yeah. Like, he was way more irritable. I mean, he's still oppositional anyway. I mean, he's going to be, he's my son and my wife is even worse <laughs> than I am. But he's, uh, he's definitely happier. He's less yeah. like annoyed or whatever. So, and we think it's that. And it's only been, it's only been a couple months. Yeah. You know? Has to make you think like how many parents are, are dealing with that and have no idea. Well, then they give their kids, you know, medications or they numb it. them with other things because they don't know. They have yeah. no idea. How did, how did you work out? If you don't mind me asking, how did you work out custody with Scarlett? Uh, that was such a tough, that was so hard for me because my ex-wife and I split, we're dual custody. We work together. We live close to each other. But that's so hard because every still, I mean, now I'm like, what is it? Seven years, eight years later, you know, saying bye to my kids every other week. It's yeah. really, really tough. How do you guys manage oh, that? Oh, it's miserable too. The pregnancy hormones has made that so much harder. <laughs> really? Like I, I could stuff it down. Mama bear comes out more or whatever. <laughs> it's, it's brutal. You can kind of, cause you're in that situation and that's the situation. You have to make the best so of it. So you kind of right? like stuff down. You're like, yeah, no problem. Like go have fun. I'll see you next week type of thing. But with pregnancy hormones, whew. It's like gonna make me cry now. It's mm. rough. Mm. So you guys do you guys split custody? Yeah, we split custody. We go back and forth weekly, and he's moved too. Oh, I was just gonna say. So he lives near. Well, that's good. Yeah. So you guys work. I mean, together generally uh, to co-parent. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, obviously, if he moved here, I'm imagining well, I mean, that had been a negotiation. Well, I, you know, I asked because that was a negotiation for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, because when I talk about it on the show, I always get messages from moms and dads. Because uh, their situation is much more challenging where the other person doesn't want to participate and that's got to be tough. Yeah, you we're know? trying to get Money Sal helps. to move out of California. and that's I, I can't because I won't be near my kids. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. So you guys work that out all right. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Having money helps those situations. Yeah, it does a lot. Yeah. Thank so you, God, yeah. You must have purposely driv uh, moved, moved to Arizona then because of the dry weather. Yeah. Wow. And I, I mean, I really like scottsdale like i really like scottsdale mm -hmm. but it was i was like i'm never dealing i'm pretty sure most houses i looked at the stats too have a mold issue yep um and in places like florida like you have to actively try to not like it's impossible it's too humid there mm -hmm. yep. so i was like well florida is not the place to be um i'm going to the desert I was so sick. I was like, I'm going to the desert. Scarlet's sick. I don't want her to get sicker and then develop something. The doctor I was talking to was like, little kids recover really quickly if they've been exposed to mold. Um, you're going to have a harder recovery than her. She just needs to get out of it. But if she stays in it, then that can progress into autoimmunity sure. and mm -hmm. all these allergies and things. And I was like, okay, we need to get out. Mm. Desert. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Smart. So when you were younger, um, during all that, were you dating? Did you bring boys home? What was it like with your dad? And cause he seems like he could be an awesome yeah, dude to hang out for. Intimidating, intimidating, I would say. Or yeah, super intimidating. Yeah. You know? he, was in, in he was intimidating. Yeah. So the first person, and this was just like a middle school, like date type of thing. Like pretty, <laughs> so you so a story? pretty young. <laughs> yeah. The first person I brought over who told me that he loved me. And I told my parents, I don't know how it got. I think my dad had probably asked, like, does he love you looking at me? Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and he had like a sit down with the person. Oh my God. Who was just this like. Like 13? Kid. Yeah. yeah. He was like, <laughs> why do you love my daughter? I Did was really like, yeah. I was like, oh, okay, this is not ideal. <laughs> so, what are your intentions? Yeah. It was not. Yeah. Not ideal. There was a lot of, yeah. What are your intentions? So was it tough then just bring your boys home yeah. and try to? I'd imagine he made, he probably made a lot of 
boys feel really stupid i feel like i mean because he he's he's so intelligent i think that he could probably just unpack anybody see i would have loved it because that's well, me i'd dork. like to sit and you're talk dork like, like that yeah though. so but, <laughs> but i could see how that would also scare the shit out of some kids so yeah he's yeah. pretty like he's a compassionate guy though so he wasn't just gonna terrify them and be like ha, yeah. Ha, ha. yeah what about mom yeah. how was she when you she was, mom is a scarier person like, oh, that's what he right. says too yeah. you're, uh, it was Jordan true said, yeah i used to so bring friends home and my friends initially would be scared of dad because he's louder and then after like the second time they came over like oh no your mom is the scary one for oh, sure so mom was a scary one but she's really good at she's really good at boundaries and judging people and figuring out what people want she's like more skeptical mm -hmm. but she's spot on oh wow. and my dad's more trusting oh and so people people get in like oh. i had i had one night where this is in like my debaucherous years. I was, they were like, what are you doing tonight? I was like, I'm going over for a sleepover with my friend. And I'd ask my dad if I could go do things because he'd say yes. And so I asked him, he's like, yeah, go ahead. And my mom was like, you know, first, like where? Who's going to be there? No. So that was like mom, but she was like spot on. Mm. She was completely right. So, so I got away with my yes. Yeah, 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 that's fine. So when you Mom's like, no, when managing, <laughs> his, so you're protective because you said you manage his brand and to make sure nobody. You just mentioned like nobody takes advantage or comes in. So, so are you were you like the gatekeeper for a while because your dad yeah. is more still is yeah you still I, are yeah yeah I still am. I also think it's been hard for him um, to get an online following maybe when he's older. Mm and being so compassionate. So usually when people come up to him and say, okay, I'm going to do this for you because I want to. Oh, right. And he goes, oh, this is a great person. It's like, no, what do they want? Mm -hmm. Is what do they want? Is And so I'm the person there that goes, what do they want? And like, if they don't want anything, what do they really want? Because right. that doesn't happen. Right. That like, you come across the rare person that, that does something for nothing. But... And I'm so skeptical now compared to what I was five years ago. Mm -hmm. I don't think most people are like that. Unfortunately. We have, we have my uncle. That's who's that. Yeah. That is for us. Yeah. 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 Well, we're He's all a pretty skeptical too. For sure. But we're, we're older. So we've been around for a little while. We've yeah, but I can only imagine like, right. And we're in the similar boat because we weren't social media people. No. Until all this stuff. And so, it, it's you know, if you get somebody who tells you, oh, you're not doing this and I can help you do that. And it's like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing mm -hmm. here. And, okay, yeah, cool. that's when they get you. I'm sure. At the beginning when you're, when you're like, no, you're right. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So we, we went through that brutally, like as a family for the first three years of growing social media and mm -hmm. having dad's brand with business people coming in, freaking business people coming in being like, I'll run it. I know what I'm doing. You don't have a business degree. You don't know. Yeah. And we're like, well, I don't know. And you sound like, you know what you're doing. And we just got raked over the coals from some business really? people. Oh yeah. Taking huge amounts of money for nothing, for making our lives a lot more difficult. Oh, wow. Setting up like corporate structures to keep dad from being sued just in ways that were so stupid, <laughs> it's hard to even describe how badly things were run. Um, but it took three years to figure out that because they're like old lawyers and things You're like, oh, you have a practice and you got recommended to us, so you must be OK. Um, but I, I've just made the rule that if you're hiring or talking to someone and you don't know what they're talking about and they tell you it's because you just don't get it. Mm -mm then don't work with them. Because if they can't explain it to a five-year-old, they really don't know what they're talking about it mm. anyway. 100%. That's a, for me, one of the biggest red flags whenever somebody comes to us and tries to Jargon. talk to us yeah. about, you know, working together, partnership or whatever. If you can't sell what you do to me in like less than 30 seconds to where I understand it, no. That's yeah. a huge red flag. Like yeah. you should at least be able to do that. And we've had a few people that sit down and like <laughs> yeah. an hour into it, yeah. We've got. I don't know what you do. We've yeah, through, I'm confused. How was it take an hour to figure out what somebody does? Right. Because oh, they you don't even know get it because yeah. yeah. you don't have a business degree. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, those aren't even words you're using. Yeah. Those are made up words. <laughs> don't give me that. That's so awesome. 
I love that. It's Do you so have great. a, is there, is there a, like a, a, a goal or an end game for you in, in building all this? Like, do you have like, oh, I want to reach a certain point or build it to this, then, then sell it off. Or is this something I want to do until uh, I'm old? Like, have you thought that far? Like what's your, what's your, all the things that you're building, you have your hands in? Yeah, a bit. So Peterson Academy, assuming that's not a giant flop, which I don't think it's going to be. I think that'll work out. Um, if that brings in money, I'd like to become wealthy enough that I can start to impact the healthcare system. Because mm. I think that the people that impact society are like the billionaires. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm working on things because the healthcare system just like wrecked my family. It almost killed most people in my family. And there's so many, it's so badly done. Mm. It's so badly run. Mm. And I feel like if money could get pumped into certain sectors or if the propaganda used was actually true information as opposed to like, here's a standard food pyramid. Like, I feel like if, if somebody had enough money, they could start to influence that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want to do. So I want to make enough money. So I am have my like hands in all these pies. What's the saying? Oh, pots. Is it? Yeah. You can't say pies? Well, I don't know why you would have a hand I, in a pie. Okay. In <laughs> <laughs> Iron's in the fire. I yeah, it's, it's yeah. Iron's in the fire is what it is. Iron's in the fire. I mean, we I understand. I've pie hands for a pies. long time. It might be the pregnancy. <laughs> yeah, we your hands in pies. Hey, you, know. you know how they make like vegan foods that look guy. like like meat, like fake nuggets? Do you do like, do you get like fake Fake like, cucumbers? Like vegetables yeah, yeah. made, made out oh of meat <laughs> to help yourself out. I like, I've tried to like, out of ground meat, maybe yeah. if I make something crunchy, it'll like resemble lettuce. No, I, so I've, I've, I've thought about making things crunchy, but like meat tastes like meat. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 you, can yeah. Yeah. Yes. you can make it into chips at least. Yeah. Make yeah. meat chips. chips. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've had, yeah, yeah, but don't yeah. the pork. You've had the pork chips. Oh, I, like, like, yeah, but, the, but, yeah, yeah, we've had uh, that. like what, pork rinds? Yeah. Doug just had some chips the other day that were like. Yeah, but uh, they use some fillers in that too to keep it, to make it a chip. No. Do you know Sometimes. carnivore snacks? It's meat and salt. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, the ones that Doug had was just meat and salt. Oh, had the other day. oh yes, I did have those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are really good. Yeah, so those are good. So you can make meats into chips. And then you have like soup, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Different forms of like mushiness of meat or crispiness of meat. Is there a carnivore cookbook? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like pages. I have a ton of recipes on my website from like six years of desperately trying to yeah. get some variety into my life. Yeah. But are there any you're excited about? Do you have any recipes? You're like, oh yeah, I'm I can so eat tired this. Of meat. Uh oh yeah. I wanna make you can slice tendons apparently and then boil them and and deep fry them and they turn into puffs like pork what? rinds. Yeah. Oh, it's a interesting. Thing. And I saw that like during pregnancy and it was like, that I need, yeah. I need those puffy tendons maybe. Um, <laughs> What's the I oil you use? Done. Tallow? Tallow. Okay, so mm -hmm. it's all beef. Yeah. Yeah. It's literally just different all forms All beef of all beef. the time. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. How, so was it you that got it, that invited us to ARC? Because I feel like that was the connection that got us invited to go over there. I helped with, dad was like, who should we bring? I was like, well, you should probably bring people with an audience. Then they'll talk about what they experienced. Maybe that's what I would do if I was trying to spread yeah. awareness about an yeah. event. So yeah, I helped put together the list. Awesome. Was it cool? Yeah, it was, it was amazing. Was amazing. Yeah. It, it was, was great. Funny though. I, I, this is why I wasn't there. It was, was funny like, though. Because I was looking forward to seeing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of people couldn't figure out why we were there. Because you have, I mean, it was like a government, <laughs> parliament people. <laughs> like we stuck like, out yeah. a little bit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. Well, there were like, <laughs> there were a lot of government people. It was like, pfft. Yeah. We don't need government people there. We need podcasters. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. No, was, it was, we discussed it was, that a little bit. It was bit. incredible. It, it was, was yeah. when the politicians yeah. would get up to speak. You could tell. We were less oh, interested. Yeah. I didn't even know I didn't yeah. need to know they were politicians. You could, you know, they you know politicians talk. It's yeah. like, I'm yeah. a little over here, but I'm over here too. And yeah. I like everybody, but I don't like this. And it's like Yeah, I hate that. Yeah. Just, that was actually a, 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 a bit <laughs> of yeah. debate by us because Sal made the point. Why why I wonder why Jordan had him there? And I thought, well, I mean, he's got a he probably has to have some of them on his side. So part of For, it is to help influence. Them. Yeah. To help yeah. influence. So, cause he's like, it's so weird that he would have them speak. Cause they didn't feel like it was aligned with everybody else. That mm. was my speculation. Was like, I, I don't know everybody who spoke, but dad's also like, he's been interested in politics since he was a kid. Yeah. Like he was volunteering with the NDP party in Canada. I guess the, yeah. New democratic party. So I've just, deleted Canada from my brain as a mm. place of existence. But he volunteered there as a kid and he thought about becoming prime minister. I know when I was a kid, like it came up. Wow. It's like maybe this, even though he wasn't involved in politics. So 
He likes it. God, I wish he became prime minister. It would be nice to have our neighbor to the north be Not sane. Not be that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. It'd be nice to go back and visit there without this like feeling of horror in the air that's mm, still there. Yeah. Even though COVID's like long gone. Crazy. Do you Crazy. know if he plan is is art going to become a annual thing? There was uh, we were all speculating too. I remember Max thought it was going to be like the TED Talk, like a more conservative TED Talk, and there's going to be more of these coming out that'll be virtually, or is it going to be an annual thing? You think? I think it's going to be an annual thing. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that'll be that'll be very cool. And I liked it. I was super skeptical at the beginning because I'm always skeptical. So I was like, who are these ARC people and what do they want? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they just want the marketing power. <laughs> what are we getting in return? <laughs> um, but then I went and sat in on a board meeting and they're really focused. I do think that those people are really focused on trying to send a more positive message it for felt the that future. Way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I can it, get behind that. No, it felt that. I mean, I, yeah, I yeah. literally got emotional a handful of times yeah, for some of the yeah. speeches. So oh, it's, that's cool. Yeah, I've yeah. seen some pretty motivational ones that yeah. came out of that. Yeah. The girl, the CEO, so who ran it, was super impressed. Except, oh, she came yeah. in with fire. Her opening speech, speech yeah. was, yeah. I mean, you to be in there and not get like goosebumps from it. Would oh, be that's weird. cool. Yeah. I haven't yeah. seen that. That's Philippa's. Yeah, I haven't yeah, seen great. that one yeah. yet. Yeah. She ripped right out the gates. And there were a lot of talks that were really, really good. Yeah. So we had a really great time. Great. I was sorry to miss that. And I was like, uh, it was eight hour time difference from Scottsdale mm. or something like that. Plus I was like, flying. Oh, I'm yeah. too like. Yeah, I'm, I'm not pregnant. I'm, it was rough. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, there's yeah. no oh. way. So are you are you gonna take a break from from work and stuff? I think I have to. Um, I'm going to podcast up until December, and then that'll, that'll be a month away from the due date. But so I've the next two weeks are like, oh my gosh, there's a lot of podcasts in the next two weeks. So I'm stacking all the podcasts so that I can release through February. Oh, so wow. that's a month off after. I think I'm being like optimistic about how fast it takes to recover. Cause I remember with Scarlett, it was pretty rough for like, I think it was six weeks. I was like, maybe this time it won't be like that. Mm. So uh, I'd rather keep working. I really like working. I got something for you. Cause now you're like, okay, I have more flexibility, more money, get a uh, postpartum um, physical therapy have them come to your house because you can there's a company called luna that you could work with okay and so them if you can't work through them try and find one to come to your house if you do corrective like specific to postpartum exercise night and day yeah Comp night in fact it's okay. the most I, I think it should be mandated yeah i, I wish do. it was available to everybody because you're the what your body goes through not like right now i know the ab separation is yeah. horrifying yeah you have muscle your muscle recruitment patterns are different and they have to be because you have a different shape and whatever and then you have the baby and people are just like yeah do nothing until no really yeah. good correctional exercise so that it's appropriate night and day you'll recover so much faster so yeah okay, I'll look into luna. that yeah. yes yeah I was told, so with Scarlett, I was uh, like 10 days afterwards. I was like, oh, hormones are gone. I'm feeling more like myself. This is great. And I just picked up a like seven pound with a seven pound baby. So like 15 pounds with car seat. Because I was supposed to go see Coldplay because my dad had been invited backstage. And I was like, Not this missing that. is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I love Coldplay. And I picked her up and I threw out my back. Yeah. That was way worse than childbirth. That mm. hurts. Like I couldn't move. So yeah. then I was in bed for like a month from throwing out my back because I had like no abs because yeah. it was 10 days after giving birth. Yeah. So yeah like, do okay, the, not doing that again. Do the postpartum therapy and then we'll send you if you don't already have access. You should have access to all our programs. But if you don't, um, we have a program called Map Starter, which is perfect. Okay. After the therapy. So after you get cleared, then you follow that. Worthwhile investment yeah, okay. though to have someone there for sure. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, someone yeah. that specializes in yes. that will... Will, Okay, Half and the there time. are people that'll come before like the six week period that yes. you're supposed to wait. Yes, yep. yes, yep. Yep. yes. Great. We'll do very like baby movements for you at first. That's so really, and then yep. ease you in. Yep. In yep. Yep. fact, the postpartum doula, if you're working with them, sometimes knows certain things that that'll help as well. I just have midwives right now. I don't okay. have a doula. Yeah, yeah. It's called so, postpartum so doula. They're so similar. They're, they well, midwives, no. I mean, midwives are like the top. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, they're, but they're like sure. the postpartum one who literally comes to your house. So we had someone come to the house every day for four hours. And this was for, I okay. want to say the first uh, eight weeks. I think we did it. And they know the foods to prepare. Uh, they know obviously baby care, infant care, mom care, you know, help with breastfeeding, um, all that stuff. So, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So worth it. Good deal. I'm just going to get all the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we're running out of time because we, we had to book a studio. So that sucks that we have to cut this, but. 
So great seeing you yeah. again. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah, and that I'm so fun. excited. I just found out that you were pregnant because he told us that we weren't supposed to say anything. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm so pumped. And now- Well, this is close. So great. Now that we know you're here, um, we actually come over here at least a couple times a year to speak over here. So we'll come over here and we'll link back up with you. For oh, sure. Oh, cool. Yeah, okay. yeah. Now that we for know sure. this place is here. So we'll link yeah. up with you. Yeah. yeah. But, great. But thanks for coming on. Yeah. Thanks for yeah, having me. Thank, Thank you. you.